More prophecies have been fulfilled since then. God's kingdom rules. Pure worship has been restored. We can emphatically say not one word of all Jehovah's good promises has failed. So clearly, by what means does Jehovah reveal new light? It's by his spirit. We recognize the, the key role that Jehovah's spirit has in revealing the truth. Point two, to whom does Jehovah reveal clarified understanding? Well, for that, we can turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and read together Matthew 24, verse 45. Who really is the faithful and discreet slave whom his master appointed over his domestics to give them their food at the proper time? So clearly Christ has, appoint, has appointed the faithful and discreet slave, and it is through this channel that Jehovah, through Christ, works to uh, provide spiritual food. So just with those two first points, it's very clear to us how uh, spiritual truth, new understanding, is communicated from heaven to earth by means of the Holy Spirit through the channel of the faithful and discreet slave. Well, we have the privilege to live during the last days, where true knowledge was foretold to become abundant. But even still, it is released and made known at a pace that we can absorb, that we can handle, and that we can use. And we thank Jehovah for that. So this is what we know from the scriptures and from our own experience as well uh, about how the light gets brighter in modern times. It comes about by means of the Holy Spirit through his channel of the faithful and discreet slave he reveals it gradually and at a time that it is needed. Well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. We understand this is how Jehovah operates. He reveals matters gradually when it is needed. Well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. Good morning. Howdy. You left me some coffee. Yeah, that's why I'm drinking tea. Well, thank you. I, it's all about you, sweetie. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Kimmy gets cranky if she don't yeah. get enough coffee. <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> um. So we've got a lot to cover here, and yes, we finally have time to do a video together. Yeah, I've been putting out content on my other channel, so I, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's where I've been. He's been busy doing that, and um, I've been busy. Thank you, everybody, for your emails and phone calls. Uh, we're doing fine, just been really busy. Um, I've been playing catch-up from when I was sick in January so you know I've got a lot to do here in the home and uh, a lot of stuff going on because it's that time of year in the United States for income taxes yes <laughs> gotta pay the man fortunately we don't have to pay anything in this year that is good that is because good. we had a pretty big business expense so <laughs> and that's my new shop yeah yeah um, now, several months ago, about six months ago, we had the um, annual meeting videos leaked to us. And we did, I think, a couple of videos talking about the annual meeting and all of the new light. And it's like, oh my goodness, they have to become a kinder, gentler cult. And we've been saying that for years. Tell me something I hadn't figured out 12 years ago. I know, but I'm, we see the yeah. fruition of it now. Well, here again, this is what you now call, and what I love to use in certain circles, the law of unintended consequences. And when you get to another article, I will emphasize to Watchtower in particular, the law of unintended consequences. Yeah. Exactly. Just remind me in case I forget. <laughs> well, here, let's make a post-it note. Law of unintended consequences. There you go. <laughs> so, um, 
along those lines about unintended consequences, I don't think Watchtower realized 12 years ago when so many of us were waking up that not only would they be exposed for the liars and hypocrites they are, but um, they just didn't have a clue 12 years ago and that all of this stuff would be available to us, including all of the literature and including on JW.org new articles that come out. Now before I get into the article, because what they did is this has been Watchtower's MO for decades that when there's a convention or an a, annual meeting or special talks or anything like that with new light, they come out with a Watchtower article to kind of clarify it and stuff because we know when you're watching the annual <laughs> meeting you're kind of like drifting off into la la land. You really don't pay close attention to what is being said. And so they have to do a Watchtower article. It, it, it's Clownology 101. I mean, it is so simple that yeah. these guys are absolute Christian clowns. Yeah. Now, this is the um, Watchtower Study Edition, May 2024. And uh, there's several articles, um, but this one that is on starts on page uh, 2, it looks like. They are talking about what was said at the annual meeting. And I'm not going to read this whole article. I don't want to bore you. But I just want to highlight a few um, phrases that they mentioned in this article because it's interesting. Page 3. What we do not know. Now, remember, <laughs> let me remind everybody what they said during the annual meeting. But have you ever asked a similar question? Maybe when you were just coming into the truth? Have you ever asked, for example, will none of those who died in the flood get a resurrection? Even those who may never have heard of Noah? And what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Will everyone who died in Sodom and Gomorrah sleep an everlasting sleep? The women, the children, babies. And was there not one redeemable Assyrian soldier in that band of 185,000 who died at the hand of Jehovah's angel? We don't have the answer to those questions. But we do know one thing. The merciful judge of all the earth will do what is right. Wait a minute. Did I hear that right? We don't have the answer to, to those questions? I thought we did. In the past, our publications have stated that there's no hope of a resurrection for those who died in the flood or those destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah. But do we really know that? Now let's talk about the flood of Noah's day. In the past, we've said that any who died in the flood would not be resurrected. But does the Bible say that? Now Noah's contemporaries certainly were wicked. Now, the Bible says that man's wickedness was great on the earth and every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only bad all the time. So those living at that time were sinners. But did they all get a thorough witness? No one his family must have been very busy building the ark. How much time did they have for preaching? And were they able to do seldom worked territory? <laughs> uh, we have found that people who live within 10 miles of Bethel have never heard of Jehovah's Witnesses. So can we guarantee that everyone living on earth uh, during that time knew of Noah and what he was doing? We can't really say that. And can we say that if someone had been given an adequate opportunity, he still would have turned his back on Jehovah? We just can't say that. They don't know. Well then, <laughs> the Holy Spirit can't possibly be directing them. Jesus can't be directing them because 
They've been saying they knew for years. And how many times have they flip-flopped the resurrection thing? At least five or Sodom six. Sodom and Gomorrah. That, yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah, the flood. You know, all of those that were divinely executed, that has been flip-flopped. I lost count over the 50 years that I was in it. Yeah, but here's, here's the thing for you Jehovah's Witnesses. You absolutely believe that your salvation depends upon identifying the faithful and discreet slave. If you can't identify the faithful and discreet slave, you've lost your salvation. Well, how can you identify these morons as a faithful and discreet slave when, when their heading says what, says what we don't know? You are putting your faith in men that don't know. Well, look at how many times people have told us that even talking to elders, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, they asked us the same question when they showed up here unannounced. Yeah. Do you believe the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave? And it's like, well, I believe you believe they're the faithful and discreet slave. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. It's like, no, listen carefully to yeah. what I said. But how can you identify them as the faithful and discreet slave dispensing food at the proper time when they're admitting right now what we don't know? I mean, think about it. You get this knock at the door, and here's this homeless person saying, could I have a meal? That person needs food at the proper time. What do you do? Out of the kindness of your heart, you feed them. Dude. But but yet, Jehovah's Witnesses, you all buy that, that, that nonsense from the governing body. Who really is the faithful and discreet slave? Blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. He is the one dispensing spiritual food at the proper time. When is the proper time for you, Jehovah's Witnesses, to start asking the questions so that you can have the food dispensed? If Watchtower deflects from your questions, then they have no food to feed you, well, spiritually just, speaking. Well, just like we were... You, we were both talking to a friend of ours, and he was talking to some fully indoctrinated mm -hmm. JWs in his congregation, and it was unbelievable, the conversation. Yeah. He said, um, the woman was like, oh, I feel uncomfortable from, from what you're saying, you know, that's almost apostate-like, and he says, well, what I'm saying is right from the Bible. That's Do you believe the Bible? Or Watchtower. There's a huge conundrum here. Yeah. Because they think Watchtower is following the Bible, but when you bring up a scripture or something that is in the Bible, yeah. they kind of like dee, dee, start short circuiting because it's like, oh, no, 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 that doesn't matter. I got to listen to Watchtower. The law of unintended consequences. Yeah. Instead of answering the questions and providing food, they deflect to some time in the future and say, oh, just leave it in Jehovah's hands. Yeah. The law of unintended consequences. Well, also, that couple didn't understand the difference between prophecy and a parable. And a pa yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, this is stuff that Kim and I hear all the time. Yeah. It, it's, it's really, well, to quote a scripture, that I'm going to read a little bit later. It's just mundane. <laughs> we digress. Getting back to the wonderful Watchtower study. <laughs> uh, what we do not know. In the past, our publications have considered the question of what happens to those whom Je Jehovah judges as unrighteous. Many times. Flip-flop it many. Food at the appropriate time is now garbage. Yeah. So if you mention something that's in the literature in the past, oh, it's now apostate literature. It's rotten food provided by Jehovah. Yeah, but I was told that was the proper food at the right time <laughs> and that I needed to believe that. You know, uh, they, they have a brain disease because they do not understand that. It's exact. I mean, honestly, I mean, they, this is just common sense thinking, friends, okay? One of my favorite foods 
And my darling wife here knows that this is my one of my favorite foods, spaghetti. And when she makes spaghetti, she makes a bunch of it, thinking I can eat it all in one setting. And I almost can, but it goes into the refrigerator. And sometimes it gets pushed to the back and it gets forgotten. Now, when this beautiful woman makes the spaghetti, that's food at the proper time. But it gets bagged up and inadvertently, sometimes it gets pushed to the back of the refrigerator. And then four, five, six, seven, eight days later, what the, what's that smell? Something smells rotten. And then we find out it's the bag. Do you think I'm going to eat that garbage? It's no longer good food. But that's exactly what Watchtower is doing. Because if you point to anything they wrote 20, 30, 40, uh, well, hell, even if you point to something they wrote last week, it's now garbage food. This is how sick in the mind these people truly are. Because they actually think in non-normal terms. Well, that's the thing. And, you know, I love the Jehovah's Witnesses. We still have friends and family that are JWs. But, I mean, there is there is a cognitive disconnect there that Huge. you just cannot get through. I digress. Go on Again, well. Well, there's lots of comments. I mean, there's there so much in this article. <laughs> there again. It's mundane. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, to whom Jehovah judges is unrighteous. We have said that for such individuals as those in Sodom and Gomorrah, there is no hope of a future resurrection. Wait for it. <laughs> but further, prayerful study has raised the question, can we really say that with certainty? But you did, you know, even a couple of years ago. It, it, it gets even better than that. A couple of years ago, did they not prayerfully consider this question? Yeah. And what did Jehovah do? He gave them spoiled food. How do we know? Because they have to regurgitate it and start over by saying, uh, after further prayerful consideration... Well, after further consideration, I'm sorry, dear, but that spaghetti stinks. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna eat it no more because it stinks. I'll make you some new pasta. Thank you. New life. <laughs> new, new spiritual new pasta. <laughs> new food. But see, this is the disconnect because yeah. they, they, they considered under prayer before whether these people in Sodom and Gomorrah would be resurrected or not. And under prayerful consideration, they said no. But now they're saying, well, we don't know. Both instances, you prayed to your God of nothing to give you the answer. Well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. And what, has it been uh, 70, 80 years since they prayerfully considered beards? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that good one. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. See, I get enough coffee, I can think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, this is, this is why this is so mind-boggling at this point. I mean, it just, it just messes with your mind. It's like they have no common sense to reason these things out yeah there's another good couple of paragraphs oh, okay <laughs> are, are, are we gonna consider those pair paragraphs under prayerful consideration no under mockery Mo oh mockery good that's even better yeah paragraph six consider a number of related questions <laughs> i have lots of questions <laughs> Several Bible accounts describe Jehovah's judgments against unrighteous people, such as the unknown numbers who died in the flood, or the seven nations in the promised land that De Jehovah ordered his people to devote to destruction, or the 185,000 Assyrian soldiers slain by an angel of Jehovah in a single night. But didn't Jehovah direct that angel? Well, here again, kinder, gentler, online religion. <laughs> In these cases, 
Does the Bible give us enough information to determine that Jehovah sentenced all those individuals to eternal destruction <laughs> with no hope of a resurrection? No, it does not. But see, if you use common sense and reason other scriptures that Mike has done many videos about, about all the people that God killed, you know, I should say the God in the Bible right. killed, you know, that Old Testament God. That is not the true source of life. The creators. No, it's not. Why can we say that? We do not know how Jehovah judged each individual, <laughs> nor do we know whether those who were killed had an opportunity to learn about Jehovah and to repent. Okay, that brings <laughs> up a question. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop. How could they not have learned about Jehovah and his judgments when it's presumed all the people on earth, just like today, understand that God murdered the world at the flood. How could you not comprehend that? Elementary, dear Kimmy, element, all the people living back then, every society of human existence has flood stories and divine judgment. So Watchtower, once again, you're wrong and you're feeding crap to people. Well, wait for it, because in the next paragraph, I caught something that is actually new light. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I first read this sentence, first thing I thought of was David and Bathsheba's baby. It was conceived in adultery. But it wasn't the baby's fault. Right. That little baby had nothing to do with that. But yet, when I bring this up to many Christians, even some in the XJW community, they want to try to um, make a defense of why God, and you can go read those verses in Second Samuel, God struck the baby. And it took seven days for that little baby to die. With a fever with a fever. So, you know, that's the first thing I thought of is was obviously when you go through the critical thinking of this, God divinely executed that little baby. Right. So is it going to be coming back? Well, here again, that goes right back to the Mosaic law, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. Okay. Jesus even famously said in Matthew chapter 5, you heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you, don't return evil to evil. But yet his God, his Father, and if you're a Trinitarian, Jesus himself employed that law because David conspired to have Uriah killed and murdered. And Jesus, a.k.a. Jehovah, took that life from that baby, an innocent baby. So, you know, anything beyond this, is is a mind screw yeah yeah so we may not need the bible to you know come out and give us enough information to determine you know that jehovah sentenced all those individuals to eternal destruction with no hope of a resurrection but we can think it out so, well, but see, that's the problem with Jehovah's Witnesses in the indoctrination. Because see, we can't understand the Bible unless we have a faithful and discreet slave <laughs> dispensing food at the proper time. But they all forget. They all forget the parable. That if that slave ever says in his heart, my master is delaying. And then they turn and start beating their fellow slaves. That faithful and discreet slave is deserving of destruction. This is the point that Jehovah's Witnesses miss and forget when it comes to that scripture. Okay? You look at the history of Watchtower and everything that they've ever said. Who really is the faithful and discreet slave? Well, he is the one, blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. But look, Jesus took his throne in 1914, and those 
were alive at that time were recognizing the signs. And in fact, Jesus looked over all the religions on the earth and they picked the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Bible students, so they say. And then what happens? The generation that was alive to see those signs would still be here to see the conclusion of the system of things. That generation will not pass away because we, the faithful and discreet slave, recognized the sign back in 1914. And yet that generation is dead and gone and you still allow these men to indoctrinate your minds with fear. So, are you ready for the little tiny new light I found in this article? <laughs> Please. Because I haven't, you know, I don't watch a lot of XJW videos, but I haven't seen any others that have found this. Okay. And you know me, I pick up on stuff that most people don't notice. Page three still, second column, paragraph seven, about a third of the way down. In regard to the time of the flood, the Bible does say that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Now, do you remember what Watchtower has said about that? That because he was a preacher of righteousness... He condemned the world to death. And he was preaching to uh, everybody, friends, family, and all of that, while he was still building the ark. Mm -hmm. We have been hearing that our entire lives. New light, new light, wait for it. But... It does not say that while he was building a colossal ark, he was also attempting to reach every individual on earth who would face destruction in the deluge. So is he a preacher to everybody he can get a hold of, or isn't he? <laughs> They'll never see it, Kim. They'll never see it. Because they literally have a mind virus. It's called fear. Yeah, yeah. They go on to mention, on the other hand, we also read in the Bible of righteous people who became unrighteous. King Solomon is an example. <laughs> <sighs> True, but this does not mean that all who have died will be resurrected, as if a new life were a right that they have earned. Resurrection is a gift from a loving God. But doesn't John say that um, all will be resurrected, even the righteous and the unrighteous? So they're actually contradicting what Jesus said in John. I, do not marvel like this because the day is coming and it is now when all those in the memorial tomb. Oh, that's right. Because Jesus used the word memorial, Watchtower equates that to Jehovah's memory. But yet... How come Jehovah changes your memory all the time, Jehovah's Witnesses? I remember Watchtower very plainly stating that generation will not pass away. And now Watchtower is indoctrinating your memory with that overlapping generation crap. We'll see. That's exactly like what the JW couple was telling yeah. our friend. When there is a contradiction here, you believe Watchtower and the governing body. So, Not the Bible. <laughs> so don't you dare bring up those scriptures that make sense of all this. <laughs> yeah. He heaven? Oh, forgive me, Jehovah, for using your Bible to correct the wrongs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Resurrection is a gift from a loving God. He bestows it on those whom he wants to give an opportunity to serve him forever. Will Solomon receive such a gift? Jehovah knows the answer. We do not. We do know, though, that Jehovah will do what is right. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, you know, like flip-flop doctrines. Yeah, all those people that died refusing blood fractions, your God, Jehovah, did what was right by changing his mind and saying, well, it's just a conscience matter now. Who's responsible for all those lost lives? Jehovah's Witnesses, read, understand, and don't be afraid to think. 
Okay, now they got the subheading here on page 4, paragraph 10, what we do know. So they just said we don't know because there's not enough information in the Bible and it's up to Jehovah. So now they're going to assume who does not deserve a resurrection. <laughs> Read Ezekiel thirty-three eleven when it comes to the way he judges humans. I thought it was Jesus who judged humans. Yeah, because even Jesus said, all authority has been given to me under heaven and earth. Yeah. All authority means all authority. Well, today, power for judging has been given to someone else. There's a different judge of all the earth. And we read about him at uh, John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And we're going to read verse 22. I'll give you a moment. John 5 and 22. For the Father judges no one at all, but he has entrusted all the judging, all the judging, to the Son. Jesus has been given authority to judge the living and the dead. Well, can we trust him? But yet, once again, Jehovah's Witnesses can't think. It's well, not Jehovah that does the judging. He left all of that in the hands of his loving son, you know, who doesn't imitate the father. Well, the Watchtower even says that Jesus, and they use the scriptures, that Jesus will judge the sheep and the goats. That's right. And the goats are going off into eternal destruction. So that sounds like to me that Jesus is the one that judges. But hey, Jehovah's Witnesses will never question. Yeah. So they quote Second Peter 3 9 in part that says Jehovah dot 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 does not desire anyone to be destroyed. <laughs> in the light of that reassuring truth, we know and know is in bold print that Jehovah is not quick to destroy people once and for all. He is profoundly merciful, and he shows mercy whenever possible. Yeah, kinder, he showed mercy to David and Bathsheba's yeah, little baby. A kinder, gentler Jehovah. Yeah. So paragraph 11, they're going to now assume who is not going to be resurrected. What, we, what do we know about the people who will not be resurrected? The Bible offers only a few examples and there's an asterisk. And when you go down to the asterisk, this is regarding Adam, Eve, and Cain. See the Watchtower, January 1st, 2013, page 12, footnote. Jesus indicate, indicated that Judas Iscariot will not be resurrected. See also John 17, 12, and study note. Judas knowingly and willfully worked in opposition to Jehovah God and his son. <laughs> We've already debunked that. Similarly, Jesus said that some of the religious leaders who had opposed him would die without a hope of resurrection. And the Apostle Paul warned that unrepentant apostates would not be resurrected. <laughs> well, you knew that was coming. You knew that was coming. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, this is the same Apostle Paul in one scripture says that none, uh, some of us surviving to the end, we'll not see death at all. In fact, we'll be, we'll be transformed in a twinkling of an eye. So is this the same Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27, it says, And it has, uh, and it has been reserved for men to die once for all time, and then judgment. But see... When you listen to the contradictory nature of these words, you see that the Apostle Paul is a piece of crap, cult person. Because he says, some of you alive today will not even see death, but yet in Hebrews it says, it's been appointed for men to die once. So everybody is going to see death at least once, according to the book of Hebrews. See? 
And Paul wrote, so why does Paul contradict himself? Because Paul's inferring that if you, if you survive to the end, you won't be judged because you'll be, oh, wait, wait a minute, Jesus said if you believed in me, you won't be judged. But yet here in the book of Hebrews, somebody's writing, it's been appointed for men to die once, then judgment. What is it? Is it a judgment at death? Or is it no judgment at death because you believe in Jesus? This scripture does not set aside Jesus' words. Well, right now they're doing videos and stuff, at least publicly, that they want the public yeah. and the JWs to feel all warm and fuzzy about. Is return to Jehovah. Return home. Yeah. You know, we Come want home. you back. And so all the JWs are contacting their family members that have left and saying, please come back to Jehovah. So they've got all this warm, fuzzy feeling stuff going on. But then they said apostates will not have a resurrection. And they are, have said many times that they're going to be destroyed at Armageddon. Yeah. So, in light of that, which is it? And I did a video, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and I said, but even if someone like Mike and I wanted to return, right. would they accept us back? No. No. No, because we've been speaking out and exposing them. We know of an ex-JW that just threw up his hands, and now he is trying to work to go back. And yeah. it's like, you've done videos and all of this. Do you really think the organization is going to accept you back? You know, just well, so you can talk to your mom, do you think your mom is going to want to talk to you and welcome you back with open arms like the prodigal son? No. Do you think our moms are going to, like, contact us and apologize for shunning us for 12 years? No. <clears throat> Their pride won't allow them to. See, and that's why this scripture is my go-to scripture for all that bullshit. 1 John 4, 18. Because this scripture right here, or this paragraph that Kim read about unrepentant apostates, you Christians, you Jehovah's Witnesses in particular, do not comprehend the value of this scripture. There is no fear in love. But perfect love throws fear outside because fear exercises a restraint. You Jehovah's Witnesses are so full of fear that you're unwilling to listen to somebody who has left and given and listen to the reasons why. Okay? When I learned years ago dot 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 is an ellipsis that's cherry picking watchtower can manufacture lies anybody that does a dot 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 you should be overly concerned that you're being lied to but look, let me finish fear exercises a restraint indeed he that is under fear has not been made perfect in love. Think about what this scripture says and use this as a go-to because I ask this of many, many, many Christians that try to challenge me. Oh, you're going to go to burning hell if you don't accept Jesus. Ask yourself why your God has not perfected your own love that that fear still dwells. In your mind. But we love them. Oh, we love them anyways. Yeah, that's nonsense. Yeah. That's nonsense. So, on page nine, and I believe this is a the article after the one I was just talking to because they have another subheading here on page nine, paragraph three. What we do not know. Didn't they just cover that in the previous? They, yeah, of yeah. course. But this was interesting, and this is kind of new light also. In the past, 
we said that once the Great Tribulation begins, no unbelievers will be able to take their stand for Jehovah and survive Armageddon. Mm. At least they're admitting that. And what we grew up with, Jehovah is going to shut that prophetic ark door and once the Great Tribulation starts, you can be on that ark door all you want, but it's too late. You have gone. E A R. False evidence. And how do you know it's false evidence back then? Because they're cor they're correcting that statement. False evidence appearing real. Coming from you, Jehovah's Witnesses, absolutely identifying who really is the faithful and discreet slave. These guys don't even know how to pick the pimple off their own asses anymore. Well, the thing... <laughs> it well, took the a minute, didn't it? <laughs> Ew! Um, the thing is... <laughs> it, it, it's sinking in, ain't it, dear? No, no, you made me forget what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, what I was going to say, now that I remember, is what I just read and what I'm about to read, stop and think, wait a minute, they're admitting they have been wrong in the past, but do they apologize? No. Do they say, hey, we were wrong? No, they don't. But but yet you go to a fully indoctrinated Jehovah Witness like my mother and say, but mom, even they themselves admit they were wrong. But Michael, don't ever say they were wrong. Don't ever say they were wrong. But, but they admit it themselves. They're admitting they're wrong. How can you Jehovah's Witnesses not comprehend? Okay. Oh, fear. All right, going on with the article. We came to that conclusion because we understood that the account of the flood was a prophetic type. See? <laughs> but, it's a prophetic type of the future of what's going to happen. But who gave you that understanding back then? Jehovah! Well, they're going to tell you where they came up with. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, Apostates? For... Apostates? No. Freddy Franz? After, after prayerful consideration. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the go-to phrase after prayerful consideration. <laughs> the law of unintended consequences. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of jumped the gun, but hey, we're gonna correct it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For example, we reason that just as Jehovah shut the door of the ark prior to the start of the flood, isn't that what I just said? <laughs> Do I know these you idiots or what? Yeah. <laughs> Clownology 101. Yeah. He would, at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, shut the door. And like I said, that is what we have been taught our entire lives. So, you know, that is what we grew up believing. We lived our lives as JWs believing that. Oh my God, we got to work hard, you know, so that we stay in that ark. They would say that right from the platform. You need to work at whole soul to stay on this ark. And in conjunction with that thought process, before Jehovah closes that ark door, you need to get out and preach, 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 preach. Otherwise, Jehovah will ask that blood back at your hand. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. And now we find out that Noah was busy building a colossal ark and probably didn't <laughs> preach to anybody. Probably not. <laughs> and yet, and yet, Jehovah killed the Sennacherib's army of 185,000 because supposedly they didn't know about the flood. <laughs> Jeez. Jehovah's judgment. Okay, so the beginning of the Great Tribulation shut the door on Satan's system of things, thus per preventing any more people from being saved. Yeah, that's what they say. I'm glad they're admitting it. Should we view the account of the flood as a prophetic type? The answer is no. Why? Because there's no direct scriptural support for doing so. <laughs> no, wait a minute. You can't understand the Bible without the faithful and discreet slave explaining it to you. They can't even explain it themselves. 
What the hell, people? Well, they're going to try to explain it, and it's like... Well, but you're just showing what idiots you are by trying to explain this. Try is the operative word. I guess. Um, because there is no direct scriptural support for doing so. Asterix. And when you go down to the asterisk, for an explanation of why this change was made, see the article, This is the Way You Approved, in the March 15th, 2015 issue of the Watchtower, pages 7 to 11. If you don't believe us now, go back and look at what we wrote 400 years ago. We got it right back then. <laughs> Jesus. Wait for it. Oh, please. I know. I'm about ready to pee my pants with all this clownology nonsense. <laughs> Jesus did compare the days of Noah. See, and that's a scriptural reference that they would always use as to right. why that ark door would be closed when the Great Tribulation started. See? Yep. He did compare the days of Noah to the time of his presence, but he did not imply that the flood was a prophetic type. <laughs> but did he, um, let's see, what's the word they use? Did he imply that the parable about the faithful and discreet slave pertained to a faithful and discreet slave today or a governing body? <laughs> They'll never see it, Kim. They'll never see it. <laughs> oh. With each person in each event having a corresponding anti-type, nor did he say that the closing of the door of the ark had any prophetic significance. So all this anti-typical bullshit that they were feeding us is now bullshit. <laughs> Jeez. This does not mean, however, that we cannot learn from the account of Noah and the flood. It does not mean that you can't learn how stupid your governing body really is. I mean... Stupidity 501! God! Unbelievable. No, um, stupidity 1914. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is... <clears throat> this is mundane. <laughs> I Did you have... Yeah, yeah. 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 The yeah. law of Go. unintended consequences. Yeah. Going back to that scripture in Hebrews, you know, chapter 9, verse 27, it has been appointed for men to die once, then judgment. Go back and read what, you know, the loving cult leader, Apostle Paul, wrote in chapter 9, verse 1. For its part, then, the former covenant used to have ordinances of sacred service and its mundane holy place. I got a question, Kim. I have a very thought-provoking question. Is this the one you asked me last night? Yeah. In particular, to the Jehovah's Witnesses that have now become Trinitarians. If Jesus is God in the flesh, you show me one scripture where he walked into the Holy of Holies. If Jesus is God in the flesh, anybody would not have prevented him from walking into the temple in the Holy of Holies. There's not one scripture, not one scripture pertaining to God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, walking into the Holy of Holies. Why did he not do that? Well, and to reason it out is... He would have been a bad example to all the Jews and the Pharisees and stuff. But if he would have walked into that Holy of Holies, would God have killed him as a uh, he couldn't human be being? He couldn't because he's God in the flesh. So God can't kill himself by walking into the Holy of Holies. It, they'll it never see it. It messes with your mind. They'll, that's <clears throat> right, because they'll never recognize it's a man-made Theology. All right. Now this is already getting to be too long, and I just wanted. But we're to, having fun. I know we're having way too much fun. Yeah. Well, we can do live streams now if we want. Well, we could. Yeah. But I don't know how to get screenshots over yeah. into the screen, so that's why we're doing this video. I have a couple of things to cover, and I want to thank everybody so much for sending me information. We appreciate you helping out. And this is where the law of unintended consequences 
really applies. Yeah. Um, this is from Vanguard, and I will put the link down below. Um, it, it's not funny. It's not funny, but it is ironic because we know exactly what Watchtower's response is going to be. Kidnap, kidnappers abduct nine Jehovah's Witnesses in Koji and demand uh, 30 million N Whatever ransom. It is. Yeah. Uh, might be Nigeria or, yeah. you know. Okay. Nine travelers on Kappa Lokoja Road in Koji State have been kidnapped. Those kidnapped include two women, four men, and two female students. The incident occurred last Saturday about 4.30 p.m. when Tahi passengers who were traveling from Kaba to Lokoja for a church convention were stopped and whisked into the bush. The victims were all members of the Jehovah's Witness, were said to have taken off from their kingdom hall in Kaaba. It's K-A-B-B-A. -B -B I'm probably mispronouncing it. Husband to one of the victims, Mr. Yulupo Eleazar, said the kidnappers have made contact with the family with their demands. He said they called to demand first for N30 million, but later reduced it to N2.6 million after negotiation. <clears throat> kinder, gentler kidnappers now. Yeah. My wife and I were traveling to attend our church convention scheduled for Lakoja, but I decided to follow a different vehicle as a Toyota bus could not contain all of us, else I would have been in the car with her. Eliezer, who is a person with disability, said the vehicle his wife traveled with was ahead of the one he was in, but all the occupants of the bus were already marched into the bush before the vehicle he boarded got to the spot. He said the kidnappers had warned them not to inform or involve the police. Too late. However, the police public relations officer, William Aya, when contacted, promised to find out and get back with the details later. Now, we know that Watchtower isn't going to do a single thing to get these Jehovah's Witnesses away from these kidnappers. They are actually going to want them to be more martyrs. They are not going to spend one dime, you know, ransoming these Jehovah's Witnesses. They're going to be martyr, martyred instead. And the only thing you'll see on JW.org is what happened. And look, we're being persecuted. We're being kidnapped and all of this. And the hate against Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, here again, under prayerful consideration, they're going to let... <laughs> The United Nations take care of this. They're going to turn to Satan's wild beast organization and have them take care of the problem. But here's the law of unintended consequences. What's it been? 11 years since we've been on YouTube? 10, 10 years? Been studying re 11, research for 11 be years? 11 this year. <clears throat> Pardon me. Within the first few videos that Kim and I did way back then, I looked at this camera and I said, Watchtower, you made a mistake disfellowshipping these two. Some probably thought, well, that's pretty arrogant. But I saw something that ex-Jehovah's Witnesses at that time did not recognize. Just how powerful the internet is going to become. The unintended consequences is this. These kidnappers, I just about bet my bottom dollar that somewhere along the way they have heard somebody state, if not even myself, that Jehovah's Witnesses are pacifists. They don't believe in picking up guns to even save their own life. They are soft targets. They don't believe in self-defense. I could show you a hundred articles that'll prove my statement. Every ex-Jehovah Witness watching this, you know what I'm saying is a fact about Jehovah's Witnesses. They will not take up arms in defense. Now, with all of the thousands upon thousands of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses on YouTube, Anybody with half a brain, a half a criminal brain, 
can recognize Jehovah's Witnesses are soft targets. The mistake they're going to make is the organization don't give two shits about its own members. No. They don't care whether they throw you to the wayside because you dare challenge the faithful and discreet slave. They would rather throw you away than to uh, in as a means to protect everybody else. But this is the mistake that these pretentious governing body members make, thinking they're going to be judges along with Jesus. The internet is more powerful than they are. Well, as a good example, Watchtower doesn't care. They care more about their policies and doctrines on the blood transfusion issue than saving their own right. members' lives. How many Jehovah's Witnesses have died for refusing blood? Yeah. A good example. Mike Pinkava, he went through the Illinois court case. He's a JW elder that was convicted of not reporting a CSA case. He allowed his own daughter to die during before surgery for refusing blood. And he thinks he did a good thing. Yeah. He's telling other family members and stuff that his daughter has a ticket into directly into paradise now. See? The world knows these things now. That's right. Thanks to all of us. Thanks to what we are doing. Yeah. Using Satan's tool. Oh, by the way, Watchtower is now doing it too because they are a kind of gentler online religion. Like well, I told my mother a decade ago. Well, they're also NGO members of yeah. the United Nations. And that's who they run to when they are being persecuted in all these other countries. And, you know, thrown in prison for their beliefs and all of yeah. this. Now since we're running out of battery, I wanted to cover this. And I'll put the link down below. Um, because Zolkin was asked about what is going on with the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Now, there's been, you know, some court hearings going on um, in Pennsylvania about whether Jehovah Witness elders are under the clergy penitent privilege. Now we know from many other court cases around the world that they're claiming they have the clergy penitent privilege and they don't have to report if someone confesses to CSA. Okay, so this has been an issue that has gone to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. And so Zalkin um, did a thing here and I'm not gonna read all of it because it's about this long. But I'm going to read this first paragraph here. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court Memorandum Opinion raises the question of whether Jehovah's Witnesses, elders who are volunteer clergy, fall under an exception to the mandatory reporting law of the state of Pennsylvania. JW's members of the Ivy Hill Congregation of JW sued the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services, DHS and asked the court to issue a judgment that as a matter of law makes JW's elders exempt from Pennsylvania's mandatory reporting of known or suspected child abuse, including CSA. Pennsylvania's clergy mandatory reporting law has an exception. When the clergy member learns of the child abuse under circumstances that require him or her to maintain the information secret or confidential. The Ivy Hill congregation members argued that under the tenets of JW's organization, elders are required to keep that information secret and therefore fall within this exception to the Pennsylvania clergy mandatory reporting law. The lower court where this issue was first raised dismissed the lawsuit holding that there was no actual controversy raised by the lawsuit since DHS has never brought any legal action against the JWs related to mandatory reporting. And that DHS is not the proper enforcement agency to take legal action against the JWs. In essence, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court held that the Ivy Hill congregation sued the wrong party. <laughs> That was done after prayerful consideration. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
And I've got to ask, how many Jehovah Witness members know the millions and millions of dollars Watchtower spends on legal cases like this? Watchtower went after the DHS. How many gazillion dollars did they spend Suing the wrong going party. after DHS just to find out that they sued the wrong party? Don't you just love Jehovah's mindset? He, he can't even communicate under prayerful consideration what entity to sue to get their asses out of the fire. Well, he must have been in the privy when that prayer was going up to him. Well, that's almost like Lloydy Boy suing oh the Mag 7 for something he said and did publicly. <laughs> Yeah, Go well, figure. there again, after what I saw this morning, it's still another example of a parent exploiting their children. Because it's no different. It's no different, friends. When you were a Jehovah Witness, and you had that four, five, six-year-old kid, Mommy, Mommy, can I ring the doorbell? Ding dong, you're exploiting your children. And if you put a track in that little kid's hand, and have them hand it to the householder. No householder ever refused to take a track or magazine or brochure from a small child. Exploitation. Nothing more, nothing less. Wake up, people. All right, since our battery's going dead, um, I wanted to thank everybody so much for watching and spending this time with us. And, um... We've got a few little computer glitches going on. We're not sure what's going on. Um, my computer is six years old, and so I might be building another one. Yes, I built this one, and it's been a great computer for six years. And so I'm researching and watching PC building videos and stuff like that, trying to get updated on the newest technology. And so that is going to take some time also out of my already busy schedule and my kids want a computer now so looks like we're going to be building yeah. two <laughs> and my other channel is growing by leaps and bounds yes so I'd check it out we'll put the spend link time over there well there we'll put again the link below before you do that i want to make it perfectly clear any of you haters go over there and start leaving negative comments i will i will block your asses quicker than you can say rumple stillskin I don't think I could say that. <laughs> yeah, well, neither Tongue can a twister. lot of people. Yeah. So, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. We appreciate it. Um, we have a Skype appointment this afternoon, so another busy day. You'd think we'd even take Sunday off, but oh well. <laughs> thank you for watching, and we love you all. <laughs> Bye. Bye.